Okay, I'm recording now. Don't worry. Um, if you have questions regarding the exercises I sent and no answer is given in the book, of course, yung even lang naman yung walang sagot, you can send me a message in the GC. And I will upload there in the GC probably a solution. I'll scan the solution and then I'll upload it in our GC. Now, I will be available for consultation every Friday 2 to 4 and Saturday 2 to 4. Now, it's better if, in, if you appoint in advance a day before and the time you would like to have the consultation between those times, 2 and 4 p.m. So let's go to differential equations. Now, this one just copied from the online notes and pasted here in the app I'm using. So let me just introduce the concept of differential equations. It's not really a difficult one to explain. Well, what are, by the way, exponential equations? Obviously, they are the type of equations that involve Exponent, like 2 to the x equals 3 to the x plus 1. We've done that in, I'm not sure if you took pre-calculus subjects in the Ateneo, but okay, pre-calculus okay, includes a discussion of logarithmic and exponential functions. Now, what is a logarithmic equation? It's any equation that contains logarithms, at least one. Polynomial equations are equations that contain polynomials only. If it contains a non-polynomial, it becomes a non-polynomial equation, still algebraic though. So obviously, from the word itself, differential equations are equations that contain derivatives. Okay, differential from the word differentiation. So, for example, take this one. It's an equation, but on the left side of the equation, we have a derivative. So, it's considered a differential equation. Now, it's called a first-order differential equation because the highest degree of the derivative or derivatives appearing is 1 dy dx, that is, is a first derivative. So this one here, what order? That's a differential equation because it contains derivatives, a second derivative and the first derivative. This is the first derivative of y with respect to x. This is the second derivative of y with respect to x. That's the symbol we use. Now, since the highest derivative is of degree 2, so we call it a second order derivative. Now, what do you mean or how do you solve or believe? Proper question for now is, how, what do you mean by solving a differential equation? Going back to this differential equation, well, if we inspect it, what is being asked by the equation is all functions y whose derivative is 3x squared with respect to x. Find y so that dy dx is 3x squared. So how do we find its solutions? Well, it's just the antiderivatives of 3x squared. Since its derivative is 3x squared, to solve it, we find all antiderivatives of 3x squared. So we integrate, we find all possible antiderivatives, okay, so that we have x cubed plus c as the solution to the differential equation. It 
contains all the possible solutions to the given differential equation. Okay? However, it's not possible to always solve a differential equation. There are differential equations for which we can only give particular solutions, not like this one. We have a general solution that includes all possible solutions. Consider, for example, the one given in the illustration below. Let's look at this equation here, uh, this function here, y equals e to the x. Now we'll claim that it's a solution to this differential equation shown a while ago. Why does it satisfy that? We can check. If you take the first derivative, it's itself. If you take the second derivative, again, it's itself. So if you subtract the first derivative and the second derivative, e to the x minus e to the x is zero. So it's a solution. Okay? It's not the only solution. It's a solution. But if you would ask, how do we get all the possible solutions that's beyond the scope of our course? Whether all solutions can be found is beyond our knowledge for the present. However, what we will be discussing are only first order differential equations and the simplest of them. There are first order differential equations that may not be solvable using the methods of calculus. But we'll study what we call separable. Meaning, they can be solved by the method of separation, that is by separating the variables x and y, as we shall see. For example, take that one. So dy over dx equals 4x cubed over y to the 4. It's a differential equation of first order, and it can be solved by separation, meaning we'll join or we'll put all x variables on one side of the equation, and then we'll put all y variables on the other side of the equation. Now, as I have explained yesterday, differentials are quantities that can be manipulated as though we are just simply doing algebra. So in the equation above, there in the screen, we can cross multiply. So if we do this direction, multiply that, we'll get y to the 4 dy. And then this direction will get 4x cubed dx. Now, what happens after? Now, all x variables are on one side, all y variables are on another side. So that means we can treat each side separately. And since we have an equality, if we integrate both sides with respect to their um, variables, okay, then we'll have an equality as well. That means from this step, we will have the following. We integrate the left and side. We integrate also the right hand side. Again, of course, having separated the variables first. Now what happens? We use the techniques we've learned and treat each separately. So integrating the left hand side, we apply the power rule, but that's in Y. So the left hand side is y to the 5 over 5. 
or Nine. 1 over 5, mm -hmm. y to the 5. Nine. Now, we don't need to put a constant of integration for both sides. We will just, we can transfer one of the constant of integration to the other side anyway. So it suffices to just put one constant of integration on one side, preferably the right-hand side where x will be. So for convenience, we will always put y on the left-hand side and x on the right-hand side, and then the constant of integration on the right-hand side. So integrating for x cubed, it will become x to the fourth. Now, I won't put dx if it's understood we're integrating with respect to x. It's 4, right, times integral of x cubed with respect to x. And if we use the power rule, 4 cancels out. Plus c. If we put a C1 though, a constant of integration on the left-hand side and then another constant of integration on the right-hand side, we can just transpose this to the other side. So it becomes C sub 2 minus C sub 1. And just rename it or let C be equal to C sub 2 minus C sub 1. So there's really no need to use a constant of integration for each side. Just one. Okay. Now, this is already a solution, and you can verify that by using implicit differentiation. Remember implicit differentiation in differential calculus? So, solving a differential equation, you can say it's the counterpart of implicit differentiation. But this one, if possible, will be so uh, expressing ex explicitly in terms of x. We'll be solving for y explicitly in terms of x, if possible. And it's possible because we only have one term containing y on the left-hand side. So we can just multiply. Okay, I'll be using a subscript so that I can, for convenience sake, rename again my constant of integration. I'll be explaining in a while. So multiplying everything by 5 gives y to the 5 equals 5x to the 4 plus 5c sub 1. Now to solve for y, we simply take the inverse of raising to 5, that is radical to index 5. So taking the fifth root, we have this. Okay, that's a solution. Oh, that's the general solution. It's not just a solution. It includes all possible solutions for a particular constant C sub 1. However, to make it, let's say, more um, elegant okay, for aesthetic purposes, or say for convenience sake, we'll rename this so that we don't have a 5 there appearing. So instead, we'll write y equals fifth root of 5x to the 4 plus k, or let's just use plus. Anyway, for each c sub 1, there corresponds a c, and vice versa. So whenever you have a constant, again, for convenience sake, you can rename it at the end of your solution. So is there any question?
So this is our final answer. The solution to the differential equation. Okay, before I give you a seat work, let's solve a differential equation, but this time it has what you call initial conditions. Mm. There, on the... So solve the differential equation dy over dx equals x e to the negative y with the condition that x when x is 0, y is 0. Now another way of writing this condition is y at x equals 0 is 0. In other words, 0, 0 is a point on the graph of the uh, function y or, yes, will be a function. So that means after we've solved it, we will have to find c. The constant of integration will now be specific. But first, let's practice again. Let's uh, show you how to solve a differential equation. So dy over dx, we will be separating the variables. So how do we do that? We will put the y or y's on the left hand side and all the x or x's on the right hand side. So y will go here, while dx will go here. If we divide by e to the negative y, okay, both sides of the equation, y will transfer, transfer, trans be transposed to the other side. And if we multiply both sides by dx, dx will tr transfer to the right-hand side. Is there any question how I got that from the previous slide? Just type, okay? So I'll continue. However, we will rewrite the left-hand side before we solve. Now, do you agree? We can write it as e to the y dy. Change the sign. Raise it up. Negative becomes positive. Then if it's in the denominator, you can put it on the numerator. Of course, if it's in the numerator, you put it on the denominator, but you have to change the sign. Then integrating both sides, so the integral of e to the y is e to the y, while the integral of x, power rule, is x squared over 2. Then plus c. I'll use c sub 1 so that if needed, we can rename our constant of integration. Now that's a solution. Uh, that's the general solution, but y is not explicitly in terms of x. So we'll try to do it so that y is equal to f of x. Now, that's e to the y on the left-hand side. Okay. So, how do we get y? How do we get y? The inverse of the exponential is the logarithmic. So if I take ln 
of both sides, they will still be equal. And n is logarithm to base e, natural logarithm. And remember, ln and e are inverses, so ln e to the y is y. Identity by definition of inverse functions. ln e to the something is always equal to something, to that something. So y is the left-hand side, and well, we can leave our answer like this, but you know, in mathematics, we have the tendency to avoid uh, fractions as much as possible. So if you, we will proceed with simplifying this one, we will have to go as follows. Okay, LCD lang yan. And then we can rename this one. So that we have finally ln x squared plus c over 2. However, it seems that this one can be acceptable. So is there any question before we continue this one? This is not yet done. Why? Because we have an initial condition. So here, we are given that if x is 0, y is 0. And here we have the solution. So I'll be putting it here. Y equals ln x squared plus c all over. Okay. Now, if x is zero, if x is zero, y is zero, so in here, we will plug in those values for x and y. So plugging in, zero here, zero here, we get the following. Zero equals ln zero squared plus c over two. Zero equals ln c over 2. Raising to e both sides. Remember, if you have a equals b, then e to the a equals e to the b. So from here, we just raised both sides, or rather e to both sides. Now, remember again, e to the ln x, this one here, like this one, oops, we have e to the ln x, equals x. 
Again, by the fact that the two are inverse operations, E and LN. So what happens to this one here? We'll have E to the 0 is 1. And then applying this, So C equals. So finally, from here, we'll have the, find, uh, the answer Y equals LN X squared plus 2. So this one now is our Final answer. Okay, there's a question, sir. Is there a possibility that the given has an exponential containing both X and Y? If yes, are we just going to follow that process? Yes, if separable. You will have to integrate E to the X with respect to X, then E to the Y with respect to Y. Try to come up with an exercise Okay, so you can work on a problem like that, which I will be giving probably tomorrow, or if not today. Okay, sit work. Uh, I'll do number 13 before number 12, okay? This one does not involve a particular solution, so you're just going to give a general solution. So, 5 to 10 minutes.
Okay, you may want to take a screenshot from time to time. Okay, who has a question so far? Now we will continue here now for the explicit solution of y in terms of x. Now, of course, you get points up to this. So maybe it's like 60% ready of the allotted credit, at least. Now, the rest is to solve for y in terms of x. So, notice an ln on the left. So, we'll raise both sides to e. You'll get this. Okay, let me read right for the sake of understanding. Okay, does everybody follow? I raised E to each of the terms on the left hand side and the right hand side. Now, although this is already correct, but we have an absolute value of Y. So we have to somehow 
be able to remove it. Now remember, if you're solving for an equation like this involving absolute value, you say plus and minus 2. So in general, if you have absolute value of x equals k, you say x equals plus minus k. So that means here, we have this. Almost done. This is already a correct solution to the differential equation. However, this can be written so that it is more compact. In other words, we'll do some more simplifications. Perhaps if you reach this part, you'll already get like 80%. So how do we simplify this? That's by manipulating the exponent as follows. Remember, e to the x times e to the y equal to e to the x plus y. Although we go in this direction. We transform e to the x plus y into e to the x times e to the y. That's what we did here. Any question on that? Pinaghiwalay natin yung C tsaka yung isang exponent. Pero kailangan may E to the C tayo. Continuing. Okay. Lipat ko lang sa kabila. Commutative naman ang multiplication. A times B equals B times A. So I can write this as plus minus E to the C times E to the 1. Ln 1 plus X squared. Commutative property of multiplication. Now for convenience sake, ito, papangalanan natin ng K or ibang constant. Dapat sana C sub 1 yung ginamit ko, ano? So if I use C sub 1, okay. Yan ay constant. Pansinin nyo, no? Plus minus E to a constant is a constant. So kahit na may plus minus, constant pa rin yung dalawang plus minus. Yung isang solution plus E to the C sub 1. Yung isang solution naman minus E to the C sub 1. So, pwede kong ipag-combine lahat ng posibleng solution by assigning that to be C or K. Okay. Gamitin ko muna yung K kasi may parang masyadong magkamuka. No? So, nawala na yung plus minus dahil pinag-combine na sa isang constant. Or Usually kasi sa book, ginagamit si So, pwede mo rin palitan yan ng the usual. Gawin natin C. Or any symbol you prefer. So, this exhausts or includes all possible solutions to the differential equation. Kahit na yung positive or negative. Kasi yung C, pwede namang negative yan. Kung gusto mong positive yan, C includes all real numbers. Okay, sinong may tanong?
Okay, this one. With an initial condition. For the time remaining. For the question posted, yung absolute value halimbawa ng 3x minus 6x squared, you cannot remove the absolute value. Why? You are not sure if this is always positive. Actually, it can be positive at times. It can be negative at times. So you cannot remove. You have to leave it with the absolute value. Unless, ganito siya. Dahil everything raised to an even exponent is non-negative. So you can remove the absolute value here. So this is positive, non-negative, non-negative. But this is not always non-negative. Okay. Okay. 